Exactly two minutes after seven. Now, there are increased calls for employers to create a friendlier environment for lactating mothers at the workplace. It follows fresh revelations in the Ghana demographic graph that there's been a decline in exclusive breastfeeding in the country. The chair of the Ghana Infant Nutrition Action Network, Josephine Kofi, wants government to accept proposals made by various groups and organizations for a policy that will provide mothers a supportive environment in both the formal and informal sectors for continuous breastfeeding. She made the call at the launch of the National Breastfeeding Week in Accra from where my colleague Hannah Odame put together this. We have heard that uh, women in the formal sector have difficulty in breastfeeding their children after resumption of work after maternity leave. But Samira and Adra have similar problems. Let's find out how they are able to juggle the two. Now, Samira, you have an eight-month-old baby and you are a hairdresser. How are you able to combine the two? Oh, it's very difficult, but sometimes she'll be crying. I'll put her at my bag before I'll do whatever I'm doing. And what about you, Adwa? You are a teacher. How easy or difficult has it been for you after birth? Uh, I'll say it's a very difficult one. But to start with, I have three children ahead of this one. And for this one, too, it's, it's almost the same thing because, because of... I want to express, uh, I want to breastfeed them exclusively. I have to quit my job for some time, feed them when they are up to school going in age before I join the work sector again. So were you able to do exclusive for the other two? Yes, I did it and I, it was very beneficial because for my first daughter, which encouraged me to do it more, she had a runny stomach at the age of eight months. But because of the exclusive breastfeeding, with the doctors themselves testified, the medicine they gave to her, she was able to uh, regain, uh, recover very quickly. And because of that, that boosted me to do, to breastfeed my children for exclusively breastfeeding. But what about this baby? He's four months. Are you three months? Three months. I'm not sure. Are you going to quit your job to I've, breastfeed? I've, I've, done, I've already done that. Just so you can take care yes, of your baby? Yes, because my proprietress is not ready to accept my baby. Although there is a crutch, she doesn't want to uh, accommodate us because she says she does not take the mother and the child at the workplace for the same time. And how does this make you feel? Very bad. Just so I tried to, to convince her, although she was, she's a past midwife, she's aware of everything which is going on, but she's still not convinced to do it. And so I have to choose one to f save the life of my baby, not to fight for money. This law of prolonging the maternity leave could be passed on to all uh, institutions, uh, like maybe the uh, private workers especially, because they will be saying, you are not the one who made the work for me, you are not the one who gave me the money to open my establishment, so you can't decide for me, you can't dictate for me to give you extra maternity leave or whatever it is. If this law could go to all of them and they, they are being uh, watched to do it or to uh, acknowledge it, it, I think it would be very good for all of us. This mother is not happy that she's had to quit her job to enable her breastfeed her four-month-old baby. There are, however, others like her who, though are advised to do exclusive breastfeeding for up to six months, are only allowed three months of maternity leave. There are others, though, who are not that daring to sacrifice their jobs and so have to come up with a myriad of excuses to explain their absence from work just so they can make time for their babies. The Ghana Health Service, however, believes if organizations would create friendlier environment, such mothers will not be so constrained. Women are not receiving the necessary support that they need, especially women who are working. And usually when we talk about working mothers, our minds go straight to the women in formal employment, forgetting that there are many out there who are self-employed. And unfortunately, even the self-employed do not also give themselves the necessary time and break to breastfeed as required. The reason why breastfeeding keeps being emphasized over and over again is that it's one of the 
uh, most cost-effective means of reducing deaths among children. In Ghana, um, unfortunately, we have now come to accept that we are not going to meet our MDG4 goal of reducing under five mortality by two thirds come September this year. And one of the reasons why we haven't been able to do that is because our deaths among newborns has not gone down much. And when we talk about support for breastfeeding women or women and work, we are saying that they should have the space, first of all, to breastfeed. They have the space when they are at home, but when they go to work, there aren't any places where they can breastfeed conveniently. Um, in our society, there are examples that we can look at. Within Ghana Health Service, we have a few examples in our health facilities where they provide crashes with someone to take care of the babies whilst their mothers are working close to work. I mean, for most of us here, um, the women especially, we know the tricks that we try to play just so we can give our babies the best. So a woman will go for excuse duty. She's sick. Another excuse duty. Just so she can breastfeed her baby. So that that baby will thrive and live. We don't want to be doing that. So we want the right provisions to be made so that women can breastfeed without feeling guilty about it. So that productivity will increase for all of us. Dr. Isabella Tego is Director of Child Health at the service. According to the World Health Organization, 12% of child deaths are averted globally each year due to exclusive breastfeeding. That translates to 2 million babies each year in Ghana. WHO representative in Ghana, Ikuyao Fori Asimudu, made a strong case for the implementation of the Maternity Protection Act, which Ghana has signed on to. In the past years, social and economic changes, including widespread marketing of breast milk substitutes, have led to lower breastfeeding rates in many countries around the world, and in turn, to a loss of the shared understanding about the practice of breastfeeding. Since the 1980s, the trend is slowly changing and practices are generally improving, as UNICEF data indicates. Maternity protection, therefore, is key, and it will help to contribute to the success of achieving all the benefits of breastfeeding. Maternity protection at work seeks to enable women to combine their reproductive and reproductive roles successfully. Maternity protection has been a core issue for the ILO since its foundation in 1919, when the first convention, 103, convention number three, was adopted. Over the course of history, three other conventions have been added. We have convention 103 that Ghana has ratified, and then convention 183 that the trade unions are advocating for Ghana to ratify. These conventions on maternity protection have two aims, to preserve the health of the mother and the newborn. It is also there to provide a measure of job and income security, protection from dismissal and discrimination, the right to resume work after leave, and the maintenance of wages and income during maternity. This year's Breastfeeding Week focuses on breastfeeding, breastfeeding and work the aim of which is to empower and support all working women to breastfeed. This can happen if Ghana and all stakeholders ensure implementation of the maternity protection conventions that Ghana has ratified. I call on private and government sectors, civil societies, co-workers, families and communities to create and foster a dignified and enabling environment that allows working mothers to do their work and breastfeed. This is the best way to ensure a healthy future generation. It was the expectation that Health Minister Dr. Victor Bampo would have given a firm word on the appeal for a friendlier work environment for others. He was, however, not forthcoming. Our attention has been drawn to a few organizations that have done well in this regard and others that are struggling to start. I commend all who have started implementing some of the provisions 
of the ILO Convention 183. I'm also reliably informed that the planning committee has drafted a petition to be submitted to parliament through the ministry. And it includes the ratification of all the provisions of ILO Convention 183, particularly regarding the extension of the maternity leave period. My name is Hannah Odami for Joy News.